Good morning. Right. Today we're going to start a project um, painting a viola in watercolour. So this is the one that I've chosen. Um, we've had lots of them in our garden this year. It's one of the garden's favourites. Uh, you can get them all different colours. Um, some people call them pandies and there's violas. Um, so this one is a beautiful uh, shade of, it's got all my favourite colours in, which are magenta and some purples and blues down here. Okay, so the first thing when it comes to doing a watercolour painting, what I would suggest to anybody is if you have a sketchbook or some spare bits of paper, um, always do some research on the subject that you're doing. Um, two, always, if you can, do some little, either little sketches or little sections of whatever it is that you're painting. Um, so if it's something like a flower, you could do a petal, uh, you could do the central bit, or just do a full sketch of it um, and, and start what we call a worksheet. So you can put notes down about what you're going to do when you start painting the actual picture. The reason for this is uh, when it comes to painting, you're going to find it one heck of a lot easier. It's going to run a lot smoother. You're not going to be stopping starting. You're not going to have as many frustrations because you've done all the research before. So this is where you put most of the hard work into. And then the painting is the pleasurable piece, as I call it. So first of all, you start, you get a nice reference photograph. So this is the one I've got. I've got it on my tablet here um, as well. Um, the colours are a lot brighter. Um, on there and I can see it and I can zoom in to any section that I'm doing um, but I've got it in front of me so uh, you can either have it on your phone or on your tablet but if you can ideally right at the side of where you're painting that is a lot better because you've got the reference photograph there if not just have a reference photograph like this make sure it's sort of at the side of what you're painting and um, so you can look backwards and forwards um, and see what it is that you need to see okay so um, with this project, you will get a doc document that you can download. You will get a reference photograph, which is like this of all the colors. You'll get a black and white one. I always send a black and white one because that will help you with the tonal values. Um, I will send you an outline, a drawing outline that you can use if, you don't, if you're not very good at drawing or um, you're more wanting to paint than do the drawing, so you can do that, um, which you can transfer onto watercolour paper in several ways. You can um, do it by a trace down. Uh, you can turn the black and white, the, the drawing over. You can go over the lines with a, a soft pencil, turn it back, then go back over on the lines and you will get an outline on your paper. The other way is a light box. Um, now, when it comes to light boxes, you can buy them or simply use a window in your home. And if you pin the drawing or such as a tape, not pin, but draw, uh, tape the drawing onto a, a pane of glass, a clear pane of glass with some, that's got plenty of daylight coming through and then put your watercolor paper over the top. And again, tape that in place and you will see the drawing coming through onto your watercolor paper. And therefore you can just trace around the outline. Um, so that's, everybody's got one of those in the house. So it's just finding a nice clear day with plenty of light coming through on a clear piece of, of glass. Um, so you could do it that way. The other way you could do it, if you want to hand draw, you can hand draw it freehand, or you can use the grid method where you either have a, a grid on some acetate where you put over it and then you draw grids on your, your watercolor paper and do it that way or you just draw grids on your reference photo and do the same on your watercolour paper. It's a long-winded way, but it's it's a good start for teaching people to draw freehand. Um, the other way is just by using measurements with your pencil, um, so measuring the distances, putting in significant marks, joining them up, and you should have a pretty, quite a good resemblance of the original. So that's the different ways of getting the drawing on to um, the watercolour paper. Now, one that I did earlier, which I kept my notes for, was a violet one, like a bluey coloured one. Now, this was just the base coats and these were just some notes. So this really was just the lightest bits of it. It did get darkened up as an actual painting. But my main aim on this one was just to get some notes down. Um, and on this one, I did notes for each layer that I did. 
Um, now I, I just generally do notes and what I would have done is I'd done, I'd have done one petal like here um, as a stage one, I would have done this one up to stage two and then obviously then stage three and four on the other pieces so that you'd got bits of each section so you, you, you could see the sort of colours, um, the depth um, and the darkness of the colours that you would be going into but this was just one of my first pieces. Um, so I drew it out, um, I did a little bit of research, um, and as we say, a viola or pansy, as we say, has five petals. The two uh, two upper ones are always side by side, so they sort of overlap, and then the, the lower petals are these three here that run around the centre. Um, now, the in the centre, we have got the female sections and the male sections, so the pistol, which is in the centre here, um, and that contains all the female parts and it's got a stigma style and ovary and it's shaped a bit like a vase. And then you've got the male part that surrounds the stigma and that's these two here. It's, and it's a bit like a cone, just like a cocoon. So it's sort of, um, um, if you look on here, so I'll show you better on the actual picture. So you've got there, that's that sort of like female and this bit here is the cocoon. And that's what is the male section. Okay. So, you know, you learn a few bits of things, probably knowledge that you would never have had before. Um, now, this was a blue, sort of a bluey violet one that I did. Um, so what I did, as I say, this was the first layer, and then I've got some notes for the second layer and the third and the fourth. But um, what I did here was some colour swatches. Um, so you could do it either on a, a spare colour swatch, like uh, just a scrap piece of your watercolour paper, making sure it's the same watercolour paper that you're using. So you could do it just like this um, and, and try several different colours and match them up to your, your, paint, your, your reference photograph and get them as near as you can. Or like I've done here, because I've used a full sheet of watercolour paper or I've been using some scrap bits of watercolour paper I've got left. Um, I've actually put them at the side here and then I've just put in some little notes. Okay. Um, and that, if you do this, you can do it in a scrapbook, uh, a, a sketchbook, uh, but it needs to be good quality paper. Now you can buy sketchbooks that have actual watercolour paper in them. So that might be an idea that you can do, or you just buy a smaller watercolour pad that you keep for doing all your worksheets in and then you've got them all in one place so that when you go back if you want to do that again that painting is quite simple because you just open your worksheet up you have a look you've got all the notes that you need there okay so that is one important thing that I do stress people should do um and you'll find that each time you do it and depending on what it is that you're painting you'll probably put a few more extra notes you probably look at the colors a lot better um you know, but this is quite a straightforward, simple one. I mean, this one was just the blues. So there wasn't a lot of colour variation in there. Um, it was more about missing out the lights and the darks. Um, but as I say, a worksheet, I think, is a, a great way to keep notes. And also it makes your painting a lot easier. So um, now I, I tend to use, I've got a, a sketchbook. It's an A4 sketchbook, but it's got... Uh, it's made out of 300 GSM watercolour paper. So I use that and every worksheet goes in there now. So this is one of my earlier ones. Okay. Right then. So you, the documents will be there for you to download. Um, and then, as I say, you sketch it out. Now, mine sketched out. You might find it quite hard to see through here on the film because... You know, I do like to have my drawings lighter. I've made the centre a little bit darker, but I'll be lightening it as we go along. But we've got the two top petals here, and then we've got one, two, we've got three bottom petals. We've got the centrepiece here, and then we've got the pattern, the beautiful pattern um, that distinguishes this plant and what makes it such a popular plant because it's, it's, it's like a smiley face at you. Um, so it's nice to wake up in the morning, spring with all of these. You can get winter ones as well. Um, and I think that's another reason why it's a gardener's favourite. Okay, so you want to put your, I mean, the paper I'm using today, I normally use, if I'm using watercolour and I'm doing sort of flowers or detail, I tend to use the Arsh's paper, hot press. Um, 
but today I'm using up a bit of the, um, I have got some Saunders and Waterford um, cold press paper, uh, which I'm using up at the moment. So it's, um, it's just that one there. So it is cotton. Uh, it's made at an English mill, St Cuthbert's Mill in, in Somerset. Um, and they do quite some nice, some nice papers. Um, this is a block what I'm using, but you can use, you know, single sheets or pads or whatever. Um, and this is a 300 GSM and it's the knot. So it's cold press is the other name for it, but it is 300 GSM. Okay, so that's what we're using today. So it's got a little bit of texture to it. But if you look at these plants, they are quite textured anyway. The, notice that the top leaves are a little bit smoother. The, the, the bottom three leaves tend to have a little bit of texture in them. Right then, brushes. I have a flat brush here that I use uh, for mixing because it simply then keeps most of the paint in the palette and it doesn't absorb it all up into the brush. Uh, I have a palette at the side of me. Um, and then I've got a rag, rug, rag cloth, or you can use just plain kitchen roll. Now, the brushes I'm going to start with today, now these are my preference. I never really like saying about brush sizes because everybody has their own favourite. And to be quite honest, it's what you feel comfortable using. Um, but I've got here a selection of, I've got number five round. This one is an eradicator for if I want to lift any paint out that's once it's dried um, so that will be used probably more later then I've got here I've got a round wash brush that it looks a bit it's fluffy at the moment but once it's got water on it it'll have a nice point on it and that's nice when you're doing something like this but it's a large say you've got a large petal area here to cover but you've got some sh quite hard edge shapes to do then that, that is good because it'll have a point on it and it gets into all sorts of the areas. So I'll show you what it's like when it's once it's wet. Give it a good stir in the water. Shape it. So as you can see now, it's got a nice point on it there. So it'll get into all of these nooks and crannies that I need it to do. But it holds a lot of water. This one, this particular one, you can get them in all different brands. This one is a, bit, um, a pointed wash by Dale and Rowney. It's not the biggest one. They do some bigger ones as a four and a six. This one's a number two um, that I'm using today. Uh, the five round again. And then I've got here another, but this one's a quill. It's called a quill. Um, and again, it's like a pointed wash. Uh, but this one's quite fine and it goes into all sorts. So I use this quite a lot. I'm tending to move away from the tra traditional round brushes um, and use things like these because of the points. Um, I can get into it and I can do really fine lines and fine detail, but we've got the body here of the brush that holds a heck of a lot of paint. So I'm not dipping into the palette every two seconds. So this is why I do like these brushes. And the, the, you know, if you get a, a good quality one, they do last a long, long time. And the point is, it, you know, if you look after them, um, it, it does stay there for a long time. And it, it is nice to use. Okay, so they're the brushes I'm gonna be using. So I've got the drawing on here. Uh, I'm just gonna get a little bit of my putty rubber. Um, I'm just going to sort of, now, when I do my drawing, I don't want any sort of loose graphite because if, if watercolour mixes with loose graphite, it can leave a, a quite a horrible mess. Um, but this also lightens your drawing um, as well. So you might see even less on the picture when I've finished. But I'm just lifting with the putty rubber all of the... Um, the loose graphite. The other one you can use is uh, you can get a bit of blue tack if you want. If you haven't got a putty rubber, get a bit of blue tack, just pull it and keep cleaning it. And then if you roll it and just roll it along so it's there and just keep rolling it off, over and it'll take off all of the loose graphite and leave you with um, a fainter drawing, but hopefully one that you can see. Because you don't want your pencil lines showing, do you? Through the end of the at the end of the day, through your painting, but um, you want to be able to see where you're going as well. So for the first 
layer at least we need to be able to see where we're going. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to do the first layer, which I call is the base layer. Um, and every, every sort of piece of work that I do has a base layer to work with. Right then, colours and paints. Now, I'm using, today I'm going to be using mostly Sanilia um, paints. Um, I have a ton of, of, of Sanilia. Um, this is them here. Uh, they're a, really nice the reason why i like these is they're a little bit softer than than the cotman's or or the the winter new professional one because they've got a little, they've got honey in them so they're a little bit softer and easier to work with and the colors are so vibrant um and you know really nice and bright um so for flowers they're absolutely they're great i don't use them for everything that i do but mainly just for the flowers the floral that i do um any others i use the winter newton so I do have a Winter Newton palette as well here, uh, which is, I've just made it myself. It's just a, it's just a dinner plate. I uh, put a blob of each paint there and I use them quite a lot. They've got the new initials around. I mean, I don't really need them now because I know which paints where, uh, but it helps you uh, get used to where your paints are. Put them in the same place all the time. You soon get to know which are your paints. Um, and put them round, I put them round in sort of a colour. So you've got your yellows there, your blues here, your reds over at this end here. So then you've got your greens in between your blue. Um, and then we've got some purples here. But then we've also got the neutrals, which are down at the bottom, right down at the bottom here, down the side here. Um, so, you know, I've got the Winger and Newton ones. And what I will do is the colours that we're using um, I will put you, I will write down on the materials list, which you will also be able to download. I will put down both the Sanilia colours and the Winsor & Newton colours. So you've got both there. So I've, I've actually got them down here on the side. Now, um, we're going to obviously be working with these colours a lot lighter today to get the uh, main section in. Um, so the first colour that I've matched up is on the top two petals, which are a bit lighter, and also on the top of some of the of the, the, the first two of the two middle petals, should we say? And I've used a, an upper rose and a cobalt violet light. Now with upper rose, Winsor Newton, or you can use a Sanilia, they have one as well. And the cobalt violet light, I've used a Sanilia one. Now for We've got some colours that we add into there um, that aren't quite as dark as some of the darker ones. So for that one, I've used um, the dark design purple, but I've actually added in um, some magenta just to, to knock it back a little bit so it's not quite as purple as, as you can see here. So the next one is the dark design purple. Now then for the centre of the flower, um, Inside, right at the centre, we've got this sort of olive green. Uh, if you were using Winsor & Newton, it's a very pale olive green. Um, in the Sanilia in the one, there's one that's called the brown pink, which that's this one here, which doesn't really look brown or pink. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a nice colour to match for the centre of the, uh, the viola. The, the yellow section of the viola in the centre, um, I've used... Indian yellow in Sanilia, but you can use cadmium yellow, um, any sort of brightish yellow. Um, and then right in the centre where we've got the, the blues going on and the bluey purples, um, this one here is French ultramarine with um, some cobalt violet in it. So it's made it more like, um, well, uh, you can get sort of an ultramarine violet, I suppose. So it's a, it's a violety blue um, colour. And we've also got a little bit of that around the edge. If you look at the, um, that colour also appears a little bit around this edge here. And it's this in here. Uh, but when you look at it, it's got a pink magenta, a, a pink cobalt side to it. And then for the very, very, very dark colours, um, I've used the dark side and purple, but I've added a little bit of paint grey into it. So it's not flat. Um, so they're the colours that I have picked. So we've, you know, in total, we've got one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight colours there. 
um, some of them are a bit mixed up. So um, they're the colours that we're going to be using. So to start with today, we're going to be doing the base layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually, and we've got to make sure that each layer that we do dries before we do the next layer. So um, you're going to see me do something that I don't do a lot of, but sometimes when we, you've, 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 you've heard of people doing wet on wet where they will wet a leaf and then they will drop some wet paint into there. Um, what I should be doing this time is I'm going to be wetting the leaf, the petal, should I say, but I'm going to let it dry. So then when I put wet paint on, once it's dry, it can move easier. Um, and I'll be using the wet paint basically as my wetting wet bit there. Um, so that's what we're going to do on the first layer. So we're going to put just the base layers down for now. So we're not really any, no detail at all. So you don't need to worry about any of the detail. Um, we're going to do this centerpiece. Um, and again, we're just doing the base layer. So there's not going to be a lot of detail. Um, and then the thing we have got to be careful of on here is we are going to, we've got this white bit here. I've marked off the white section. So that is where we've got to keep the paper dry because we're just going to use the paper as the white. So that is that section needs to remain very dry. Right then, so I might have to move the camera up slightly just so you can see. Whoops, let me just move it a little bit more. Okay, so you can see, I don't know if you can see the drawing perfectly on there, but... Um, you'll, you'll see it as soon as I start to paint into it. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wet these, these five petals and then let them dry. So while they're drying, we can be doing some of the middle section because, they're, because the sections are so small, we're just going to be doing them um, wet paint on dry paper. Okay, so to wet the paper, I'm going to use this brush that I told you about, which is my... Uh, pointed wash brush okay so any wash brush or or larger brush probably a five or a I wouldn't go much further than a five or a six okay and I'm just going to go sort of up to the line and try and keep I'm going to try and keep it my, my hand as steady as possible and keep inside the line but you can see the point there is going right into the inside of that where that petal is there I am doing one petal at a time Okay, and I'm trying to put the water so it, it's coming in that in the direction of form. So right from this center part here. Now we've got a little bit of uh, section here as we come down behind that petal there where we got this white. So we need to retain that. So don't go beyond there. Okay, and then pick up some more water put my water on the paper and then pull it, pull it around, making sure that you can see the point of your pencil. So you may be better moving your paper around as you go um, so that you can see the edge of your brush. So it's just within that line, go around the edge there. Okay, pull it down, make sure Going over the edge, um, and then if you lift, if you lift your paper up, you can see any places that you've missed. I've missed a few places there. So by lifting the paper, you'll see the shine. Come down, back over. You don't want puddles, and you don't want any dry patch. So you want to make sure that you've give it a nice wet covering. Okay, there, and then I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to miss that one. I'm going to jump this, this petal here. You can see the shine there. Look, that's what you should have, a nice sheen. So you don't want any big puddles or anything. And then I'm going to go to this one here. Now, you'll see all these little shapes here. This is where the white is going to be. So again, like a serrated edge so using the point of your brush if you've got one with a nice point what you need to do is go right in and get these serrated bits there again 
wetting all the way round. Okay. Touch the side of that petal round there. Round the outer side of the petal there. We've got that little bit of a kink. Okay. Round and round. Round and round. Again, just check if you've missed any pieces. I haven't got a little bit of a puddle there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it round. That's it. Let's even it out. So it's got a nice even covered of paper of the water there. And you've got all these little serrated edges as well. So this bit will remain dry. Okay, I missed that one out. So that is now drying up there. So now I can go into this one and I'm going to wet this one exactly the same process. Round up to the pencil edge using the point of the brush. Get that nice crisp edge on the outside. Okay, on there. Comes down into there, so it's joining that one there. And then we've got these serrated little bits again where the white appears on the flower. Okay. So using your brush point, excuse my hand, you use your brush point there and just go into each serrated edge there. Okay. Round. Again, lift, make sure that that's nice. So if you notice, we're not doing the darker sections inside, we'll do them later. Um, and now I'm gonna come down, we've got just got this, well, we'll do this top one now. Okay, so water, completely round. Okay, do that on there come into this center with this nice point. That's that's what I say about these brushes. They're so good at getting into those little sharp pointed edges. Okay. So check again. Yes, that's got a nice shine on it. So let that dry. And then we do this bottom one here. Okay. So I'm going to go around the shape at the bottom first. Makes it a little bit easier. It's quite a feathery. That's some nice curves on this one. Okay, use the point again to go around for the pencil line. Up here and then again to these serrated edges. Just using the point just to wet into those little edges there. Okay, and then pull the water out into there. Okay. So once this is dried, if you take a look, you can actually see the difference. Now, even though it's very clear water that you've used, and once it's dried, it does, you can actually see where you've been with the water. Okay, um, so you can actually see where you've been totally with the water. I mean, I can see it's just there. So we've still got that bit there that's drying, there that's dried more or less. We've still got some there that's drying. So we're gonna let that dry. Okay, but we have got all of those petals all the bottoms of the petals at least so that's that's the main part okay so we'll let them dry so when i'm um sort of taking water out of my brush i use my cloth like this and then i tend to sort of turn it and pull it towards me like that and then that way you're keeping the shape of the point of the brush Okay, so I'll do it like that. There we go. 
And you've got the point of the brush. There we go. You can do the same on toilet, uh, toilet, on kitchen roll as well, if you like to use the kitchen roll. I usually have a piece at the side of me just for little, the little times that I use them, but I mainly use the, the rag cloth, the old flannel. Right then, so while that's drying, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix up some um, some of this sort of uh, um, olive green and some of this yellow, and we're going to put a very base, very light base layer of that in there. Okie dokie. So for for the um, for this little piece here, I'm actually going to use um, the I'm using the Sanilla, which is, as I say, a pink brown, it's called, but it's, it's a brightish, got a really bright colour to it, but I want it very watery. So I'm mixing it really watery. Okay. So if you look, it's sort of this colour here. So it looks a bit yellowy, but it's got some green in it there as well. Okay, so that's the Sanilia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the, the little brush I was telling you about before, the quill. Okay, this is a 10-0 one. Um, so I'm just going to wet it. Take the excess off at the side. Roll it on the cloth. So now I've got this nice point. So I'm going to pick some of this, and it is watery, some very watery paint up. Okay, so I'm rolling the quill in there so this will hold a tremendous amount of paint so I should only I should only be able to I should be able to do this in one one fell swoop should we say rather than um having to go back so carefully without disturbing if, if this is wet at the top I'm looking for this central so what we're doing now is this, this little central piece here and there's also just a little bit up there okay so they're the little bits that we're doing now so I'm just going to drop this in. It can be very watery. Pull it out. And don't forget, watercolour dries lighter than, um, than, it, than what you see in your palette. Um, and if you just dab, if, you, if you've got a little bit too much paint on there, with the, with, because these are very pointy brushes, um, just dab before you use it, just dab it onto a piece of your kitchen roll. And then you've got just that little bit that comes up into that white area there. Okay, so I've just put those little bits in. So they're only tiny little bits there, but they will dry and they'll dry lighter and we'll work on those later. So now I'm just cleaning my brush, uh, pulling it and twisting it so that I've got this nice point back on there. So the next colour in there that we're going to mix is, now I've used an Indian red from um, the Sanilia range, but you could use a cadmium sort of mid or, or deep yellow. It's, uh, lemon yellow I find is a little bit too bright for it. It's a bit too cool. So I've warmed it up, but I'm, I'm just using this Indian yellow um, from this range. Okay, so this one I'm mixing up. Now I'm mixing this up fairly. Um, it's not too watery. Again, be careful where you put in your hand. So it's just for this section here. Now, let it touch in. This will still be wet, the green, but just lay touch that in because it. if you look at it, it is a soft edge when it meets the green. Um, so we can always... Um, just that on the next the next level but it is a soft there is a softer color there as well so and the other thing we have to watch is when it comes down here and it's meeting up with where all the, the blues are and there's actually a little bit of burgundy there i can see we have this serrated edge now if you've got this yellow and it touches any blues you're going to get green which we don't really want around this area we just want the yellow so what I'm going to do, get plenty of yellow on my brush, dab it onto the cloth, and then I'm actually going to use, so I'm just leaving some of these little sections where the blue's going to go. 
by using this point, which is, this is why I say these are, brushes are brilliant for this. So we can put some blues in there once this yellow's dried and they won't, they won't go green. Okay, and we've got the yellow there. So we've already got that in place. So we've done that on this first section. Okay. Now, if you notice, I've left, I, I did this quite dark at this side. Now I'm looking at this flower and it's got, the yellow is sort of darker there. And then in the middle, it's quite light. So if you look, I've left it. So I've used the most of the paint on there and then I've dabbed a little bit off. So we've got here, it's a little bit of a lighter section. And then we've got the dark here, but it all looks nice and smooth. Okay, it all looks, it's, there's no hard edges there, all nice and smooth. Okay, okay. Now we may have to put um, a bit of, bit more green into this later, uh, looking at it, but uh, for now it's fine. It's just on the base layer. So let's get back to these petals. So if we have a look, we've got up here, if you notice the top two and the top of this one. So regard disregard these darker colors. We're just looking at the lightest, the, the lightest use in, in here, the, 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 the lightest color and the lightest hue and tone of that color. So if you look here compared to the bottom petals, which are more purpley, we have got this beautiful uh, opera rose color with cobalt violet, more on this petal than any of the other two. So what we'll do is, especially with this one, we'll do a full base layer with the upper rose and cobalt violet. And then what we will do is, well, we've still got that color on our brush. We will put a, a little bit on here at the top of this one. And we'll also do some just in this area on this one. And then what we can do is we can add a little bit more um, either cobalt violet or, or even a bit of magenta into it just to uh, make it a little bit more purple and then as we come down here we want the purple so we're going to mix those paints up to start with so let me clear my palette of the yellow and the, the greeny color that we just use touching those now they're fairly dry okay so we need to let those dry um, so while they're drying, you can be mixing up your colours and then we'll come back in a minute um, and then we can start with the petals and then we're going to have the better, we've just got these centre pieces to sort and then we'll have the base layers. Okay, so um, I'm just going to start mixing the colours up and then we'll be ready. Right then, so mixed my colours up. So what we've got here is... Um, just turn that out that way a bit. We've got this is the Opera Rose and um, Cobalt Violet. This is the Opera Rose, but with a little uh, magenta, sorry, with a little bit of purple in it, not much. So there's not much between them, but there is a slight difference. And then we've got the uh, Dark Sedan Violet. But if you look, they're done very watery, and I'll be watering them down as well as much when I'm using them. Um, and this is because we're just doing a base layer. So we build the color up as we go along and we can change hues as we go along as well. Um, but we just need to get a layer on of everything over here, just except for these white sections, just so that we've got the first stage done and then we can move on. So I am, um, for this one, I'm gonna use my, um, I'm gonna use the wash again, the oval wash one for the top two uh, petals anyway. Um, so this time um, I'm going to start with this one, which is the lightest. So I'm going to put on here um, a very, very watery uh, opera rose um, with just a touch of cobalt violet. So I'm going to pick as much of that up. So if you look with this brush, it's very watery, but I am picking up, um, twisting the brush towards me pick it up as much of that paint as I can. And then just before I actually put it on the, I'm just gonna dab it on the dirt cloth. Okay, and then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start here at the base and work out and follow the direction of the flower. Okay, so it's watery. I'm just going up to the side of that petal there. Okay. 
and I'm pulling it out. Push off a little bit. Okay. Keep pulling it and pulling it. So what happens is if you look as you're coming up to this edge of the the flower, we are actually getting lighter a little bit in colour. Okay. Come round to there. So you don't end up with an hard edge. I sort of come across and I pull it round on the top and same on that side. So round and down, then that way you, you follow in that edge, but you're not going to end up with a, a line of color just on that edge, which is not what we want at all. So just double check you've got these edges nice and clear here. Coming up here, that petal's um, behind this one. Okay. Pulling it out. So as you can see, it's a very pale colour. It will dry lighter and we can we build this colour up. But because we've come from centre out, we've got more of the colour. I don't know if you can quite see that, but we've got actually more of the colour in the centre. Okay, so now we don't want to be doing this one because that one's wet, so it's going to end up touching it. So we'll be better off doing some what something like this one here. Now, while we've still got that colour on, if we look at that petal, so if you look at your reference very closely, you will notice that on this edge here, we have got the same colour as what we've got there, more or less, but we've got a very dark colour here. So what we need to do is very carefully from this one so we want it watery again it's in the same color i'm gonna sort of i'm looking at my reference now there's also a very white edge uh there's a little section that's left out here around this edge here so that it, we can distinguish it from this petal so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to change brushes now and i'm going to use the the um the like feel bear one so I'm picking up that colour, very watery. Again, just twist it towards me, dab it on some paper. Now, I want to leave um, around here, just from where this petal is. I want to leave a little bit of a white line, if I can, around there. And it comes down to this centrepiece here. So if we just gently, using the very tip of that pencil with very light pressure, there we go, around there. And it comes round as well here. Now this is more or less where, so I'm just going to put this pink, this very light pink down here. So as a touch of that, that where we've done that line, as I touch it because it's wet and still pull it and pull it down towards that center. But don't go over this. If you look, you've got that jagged line here. So we're just going up to where the white touches, where the white, um, the pink touches the white area there. Okay, and again, using the point, do your serrated edges. Okay. So well, that's that bit there. Now what I'm gonna do, I'll sort of dab that into there so it's still damp. I'm now gonna pick up the violet, purple, but water it right down. And I'm actually gonna then, continue on so if you look it'll softly where it joins that it will nicely softly i'm trying to keep that little clean edge again up to there then it, it there's no white edge here at the edge of this one and again up to the white and then do the you want the serrated bits there okay so we're working from as much as we can from the sort of base working outwards. We're going into this pink, what we've just put. 
And if you look, because that pink is still wet, you see that it will blend into there nicely. Okay. And it gives us a bit of a, I'm doing like a stippling effect. I'm sort of pulling it down. Um, we got some of it in here as well, um, to the white, to the white edge there. That's it. Now, I have actually just gone over a little bit there. So what I'm going to do, that didn't happen. I wasn't looking, I wasn't concentrating. I need to clear. So what I'm trying to do, I've just wet that and I'm just going to use my towel. There we go. That's it. <laughs> I'd gone a little bit more into the white than I wanted. There we go. So that's where that ends there. Okay. So if we let that flower, that petal, sorry, that petal there. Dry off. Well, we have a few little light patches, white patches. That doesn't matter. We can get rid of those on the next layer. Right then. So this bottom petal, the white, it stops there. So we aren't going to touch anything that's wet so we could go on to this bottom petal here so the bottom petal now this one we're going to have this this one here which is um the magenta and the purple so i think it needs a little bit needs that um needs to be a little bit more um let's have a look magenta -ish, but that's fine. And then as it goes up into the, the middle, up to this section here. So we're going to use the magenta on the outside here. And again, we're going to leave a white, a very fine white line if we can, all the way around the edge of the petal. Okay, so don't go quite up to that line there. Follow it round, pull it down like that. So if you keep going, it down just keep and pull it down so far and then sort of wisp it off because it does get darker keep checking back at your reference now you don't want to you don't have to have the exact shape and make sure each you know each curves in the right place but as long as you've got it as near as you can get it Fetch it down there towards the center. Okay. Like that. And then I'm going to start now from this edge. So we're going to be coming, as it comes up here, we want this little white edge leaving between that one and that one. Okay. And then round here. Oops. Pull that down. Okay. So that color. Sort of comes there. I'm using a stippling effect. As I say, I'm just pulling the brush, leaving that little white line all the way around the outside. Okay. Stipple that down into there. Again on this side here, and then match up, and then that's it. Pull it down towards the white but not quite up to the white because what happens it is if you look at that petal it then starts to darken follow the direction of form if you can so now what we want is this very watery purple um so we do want it quite watery um so we're going to start sort of here and then where it hits the white we need to have the jagged edges but pull it also up into the pink so it blends so if you look it's going to soften in nice and gently okay that's it so we've got so we've got this purple now coming here it's just a thinner line there it goes into into that white area there, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I've noticed we've got this sort of bluey color there. So I'm just gonna quickly get some ultramarine blue. Okay. 
and just add a little bit of the cobalt violet to it. So it's not quite all blue. It's got a, a purpley tinge to it, but it's mainly blue. Okay, very watery. And then I'm just going to literally put that on the very edge of where we've just put the, because it's still damp. What you'll see is that the paint will move back in, but if you use a thicker paint, slightly thicker paint, it's not as watery as the paint underneath. What happens is you'll get this nice soft feather edge. And if you look at your reference photo, that is what we are looking for. Okay. I'm just going to clean my brush and I'm going to dry it off so it's nice and it's damp. So just on the back of my hand there, I can tell it's damp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look here. I'm just checking round. So I'm pulling any loose colour or wet colour that's up there so we don't end up with too many blooms on there. Okay. So that's that bottom one. Um, may have a little bit less colour on here, but that's fine. We can do that in the next. Any adjustments we can do in the next level. But you can see we've got this nice soft purpley edge there as well. Right then, so. We can actually go on to this to the top feather. Now the other top uh, petal, actually feather, petal, anything but petal. The other petal, if you look, it's just the same as that, but just slightly darker. So we're going to use the one that's got the little bit of um, it's magenta and purple. So we we'll use that colour. So I may mix a little bit more, up, but that's just a little bit of the purple. More of the magenta. I think that touch of apples. Right then, so that's very similar to that, but it's a lot, it's just slightly out, but we need the darker colour. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this all the way from the dab off. I've got too much paint on my brush, that's it, dab the edge. Okay, so I'm coming from here. Now I want to crisp edge around this flower here, bearing in mind we've got that white edge there so you want a little white bit in between now as it meets here it's where that little bit of white is so do a little bit of a jagged edge there and then coming up here again we need to keep a little white edge in between those two those two there You've got and keep you try and keep your brush up right, you'll get that smallest of edge then. Okay, okay. And then we just need to pull the rest of that up like that. And we're coming out towards the edge of the flower. Okay. And if you look, I'm using broader strokes on here because these two petals are a bit softer okay um and there's no white it's only where it crosses that flower there and then the rest of it is just going right up to the edge okay so i'm just going to swap my brush again now back to the the big wash one because it's um there's not a lot of other edges on it so i can get more paint down quickly Okay, what's the point? Okay, because I don't want any hard edges if possible on here. Which I've created just there where I put that little bit of a white line. I should have mixed them in, but I can sort that in the next layer. Okay, we can darken that off a little bit more in the next layer. Around the edge. Following the form of the petal. So it all comes back, little white edge there, all comes back into the center. Okay. So 
So we should have a nice bit, bit of a white edge round in between the petals um, and then the colours. Right. So it is a slightly different colour, as you can see, to that slightly darker. And it's fetching it for, further forward. Okay, okay. So now we've got to this, do this one. So this one is going to have, it's got the magenta on. So it's got the same colour we've just put on there on this edge here. It's got a very light purple here. Okay, so what we could do is um, if we use this magenta really to start and do most of it. So again, it's got to be serrated where the white is. It comes up. We've got that white edge there. Um, we're going to have a white edge on here. So I'm going to swap. And in fact, I'll try and keep to this brush because um, I don't end up with that very hard edge then. Um, that. Pull that brown there. Like that. To there and then back into here. And then we've got all these serrated bits here and then we've got this white section here again in between the petals okay and then pull that up now this paint is still wet so what we're going to do okay pull that up there around there Careful around so you've got the shape of that petal there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just putting in a little, dropping a little bit of the, the purpley blue in there. And it's very dark just on this edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just dropping in some colour here. Okay. Take the rest off on my brush and just gently pull that back. And it comes up. Okay, we've got a little bit of it here. It's mainly this top end here of this flower. We need it to keep it very light. Okay, and then as we come further up here, it comes further out. Um, and it can come almost to the edge here. Okay, soften that edge away. So we're all, all we're really doing is mapping out. And then what we can also do there is with the, where we did that with the blue. If you look, we've got that black going on here as well. We didn't do it on the others, but we can do that in the next. But while this one is still wet, we can actually touch. Now, as it comes around here, it does get a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally clear my brush just to touch more water to it. So it's going to be more blue, but it's very light. So it's not going to be as dark as it is around this side, but it's noticeable that there's some blue there. Like that. But it's not going to spread as far, okay? So the only places we missed it off were there's some blue coming around here and there's a little bit coming around there. So there's two ways of doing it. We can do it on the next layer or what we could do is if we just get a bit of water now, if that's dry, which it is, what I'm going to do is I'm just putting some clear water. I'm just putting some clear water just around that edge there and just on that little edge there where we need it. So that's it. So the water though, I'm taking out further than I want it to go because I want a nice soft transition. So I don't want, so we make sure the water goes further than where we want it to go. And then we pick up some of this little bluey purple. Now the paint has to be um, a little bit thicker than um, the waterier one. So it makes it a bit milkier. And then what happens is when we add it, still wet enough to, if you look there, it's still wet enough to spread up. 
but it's not going to spread. Now, the wetter the paint, the more it's going to spread. So, that colour quite up here. So, that's it. There we go. And let that spread a little bit there. And then there's just a touch of it here. Like that. Okay. And that should, when that dries, that should be fine. So that is, we've got that sorted into the white. Now then, all that's left to do on this foundation or the base layers, okay? So it's looking a little bit hit and miss, but what you can see is you've got all these variations in colour. So we've, we've mapped out where the colours are going to be darker, lighter, um, slightly different hues. So like here, it's going to be a little bit more it's going to be darker purple. There's going to be more purple here. Um, in here, we're going to have a look quite a bit of purple, and we've got purple down here. So we've got the, the tones there. Um, so we're just going to build on those in the next few layers. But what we need to do now is just map out this centerpiece here. So I'm going to use the fill, fill bear brush for this, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the lightest colour in there, and it's a bit like this colour, what we've got coming around here. So that's the colour I'm going to choose to use. Just have a bit of blue in it. It's like a bluey purple. So it's a light colour. And we've got this white section here that we've got to miss. And we've got the white section here that we've got to miss. So if we just look and just put in where a few little bit of whites there. Okay. And it comes down. So here, this is a it's a sort of a, it's a cocoon that covers that. So if we just mark around that, okay. Come around and then we've got like, I call it a spider's web here. It's like a spider's web. But it sort of like comes, you've got these sort of odd spiky bits because we've got some more dark colors to go on top of there. Okay, and you've got some that come right out. Okay, and it comes around there and it comes to there. So that's that side done. And we've got the white section there. Um, and then if you work around, if you carry on working around this side, you've got now this is where you've got to be careful when you're going back into this lemon. So if you have your brush up. Just put in where we left some gaps in the yellow. You just put the blue in there like that so that it doesn't mix too much with the yellow. It doesn't matter about it getting dark in sections because this section will be a lot darker when we're finished with it. Um, just make sure you get some nice little points on here. Um, like that. And back down into the middle. Like that. So it's all little fiddly bits, just you know, initially, but we will. But it's going to be a lot darker because there's actually a lot of there's some ready colour in here. So we're going to have to introduce some red somewhere along. Um where we can, when we come to it. So I'm just pulling this out. Okay, so we're just doing the bare, the bare bones of this. So we're mapping, I call it the mapping process. Okay. So this isn't gonna be, much like the reference photo because I haven't followed it. Um, I know exactly what I'm looking for. So, you know, there's just going to be, I'm just trying to do it as close to it as I can, but I won't get the exact. So that comes around there. And we've got one that comes around there. That's it. And then that, that one there. So that's, so we can fill that bit in there. Okay. And then the only thing we've got to map in now, if we just map them in, is 
if we get that purpley blue we've just done, and then if I get some paint gray and mix that in with it. I don't want it too dark yet, because we're going to be doing it a lot darker, but I just need it in. And because this isn't quite, it's damp but not dry. So because we don't want, we want some, we want some hard edges out here in the white, but in the the purpley bit, we need it to soften off a little bit. So it's quite thick. It, the paint's thicker than watery. So let's see if we can, if it will work. So I'm coming from this dry down into there. These come in at all different. And some of them have bits that come off like that. Another one there. And we've got some that come here. And some are, some have branches that come off and some are quite thick. But we're just mapping in where these are gonna be going. Okay, so then we're going to have a couple here that come out like that. Some of them go into there, and that one can come out there like that. These will be made much, much darker as we go along. Yeah. So there we are. We have got a colour down on everything. The only thing we haven't got a colour down on is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the. Um, it's it's a white, but it's got a bit of a grey tinge to it. So I'm going to just put in a very, 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 very pale um, violet colour, but extremely pale. I'm just going to tap it in, It'll take most of the colour out of it. So there's not much in there. Whoops. Use the dry brush if you've got too much in there that's wet, just dry the brush off and suck it up. Okay, so it's just to give it some tint of colour in there and we can sort that out later. Right then, so we've got the base layer down. So we've got these, so this is a bit... Pale, it's, it's quite pale, but it's going to be really bright and vivid when we finish. This one is going to be a little bit more, um, it's a warmer colour and a bit more subdued. So it's going to actually going to fetch the, the, this leaf forward a little bit. We'll have this very pale colour like we've got here on the edge of this one, because this one then is sitting in front of there. And then it goes really dark here because it's out of the shadow. Um, in the shadow, sorry. And then we've got quite a lot of shadow work here down the bottom. And then this is going to be a lot lighter, lighter here. We're going to have some shadow here and a bit coming up here. And then again, we're going to have the light colour here. And then we've got to get this centre. We're going to get, to get the contrast. So the next video, what we're going to start with is our darkest tone, and we're, that, which is the middle. So we are going to darken these middle bit, bits up first of all. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to work on our mid-tone. So we've done all the lightest background now. Then we're just going to build up some of these layers and we're going to create some of the veins as well that we have. Um, so if you look, we're going to be creating a lot of these veins as well. Um, so that will be done in, in the second video. Um, I, think, I think we should... Um, get most of it completed within in the next video. Um, if not, with them, we may need a third one. But um, hopefully the next video will be uploaded in the next few days. So this one will be uploaded and then, or I may wait and just upload them all together. But this is the project, so I hope you enjoy it. So this is stage one. It's looking a little bit misshapen at the moment, which it will do. But as soon as we've... Um, um completed the next stage you probably will should see it now then start pull together thank you very much and i will see you in the next video thank you for watching and i hope it turns out okay <laughs>